Tropical forests are famous for their diversity of organisms, including arthropods. With an estimated 41,000 species of arthropods known to inhabit this oasis of life, the question remains, how exactly do these many organisms share resources? One group of arthropods in particular where resource partitioning has been the subject of question is scorpions. Scorpions represent an ancient group of terrestrial arthropods dating back to the Silurian period that existed over 440 million years ago. Despite a relatively high diversity, with over 1,500 species distributed worldwide, scorpions are remarkably uniform in physical makeup and life habits. There are eight known species of scorpions inhabiting Trinidad, with six in Tobago. Tropical forests comprise of a myriad of wildlife and hold various niches that scorpions can occupy, such as leaf litter, shrubs, and various microhabitats on trees. Scorpions are nocturnal and difficult to locate and observe in situ due to their cryptic nature. However, with the discovery of the fluorescence of scorpions under ultraviolet light, it made finding these creatures much easier. Why and how does this happen? We know that scorpions possess a chemical called coumarin in the exoskeleton, and this fluoresces under UV light, but the exact ecological significance of this glowing is still a subject of debate. MSc student Rakesh Bukal is captivated by scorpions. In tropical forests, there exist several St. Patrick species of scorpions. How exactly they partition their resources to allow for coexistence is one of the perpetual mysteries in scorpion ecology. Differential use and selection of microhabitats is believed to be the underlying mechanism that allows for this resource partitioning. So you're probably asking yourself, why study scorpions? Well, two major reasons, the medical and ecological significance of scorpions. In Trinidad, a high proportion of the scorpions belong to the genus Buthidae, and species of this genus have been known to cause human fatalities worldwide. One particular species belonging to this genus is Titius trinitatus, which is endemic to Trinidad. It is the most venomous scorpion in the West Indies and is the only scorpion known to cause human fatalities locally. How venomous are scorpions? Well, <clears throat> scorpions, uh, the, 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 the lethality of their venom does vary from species to species. Mm -hmm. The two that are of major concern to us in terms of the toxicity of the venom would be the Titius trinitatis mm -hmm. and the Centuroides. There are some lasting effects even after someone has been stung by Titius. Yes. Yeah. Um, titius, the, the, the venom attacks the pancreas. Okay and we get uh, late onset diabetes mm -hmm. in those patients. Okay, okay. And uh, the onset of the diabetes can be as much as 18 months to three years post, after post envenomation, yes. So, so you would say definitely the Titius trinitatis is, is a species of significant medical importance? It is. So Dr. Simmons, as if someone gets bitten with a scorpion, right, um, what would you advise that their first course of action would be? Well, the first course of action should be to keep the patient calm, mm -hmm. as calm as possible. Um, we recommend that the bite site be kept um, higher than the heart, mm -hmm. if it is at all possible. Um, the reason for this is that you're trying to minimize the rate at which the venom gets to the heart and then will be pumped mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, out um, through all parts of the body. Um, but the underlying theme is to get the person as quickly as possible mm -hmm. to um, a hospital. For this study, we surveyed two lowland evergreen forests in Trinidad the arena forest and bush bush forest to determine niche separation of scorpions in these two areas. Arena forest is located in North Trinidad and bush bush in East Trinidad. Surveys were conducted between the hours of 8 to 12 over a four month period from December 2015 to March 2016. 
ultraviolet flashlights of wavelengths 395 nanometers were used to locate scorpions since they fluoresce when illuminated with this light. Set trails were walked at each sample location and microhabitats from the ground to the subcanopy level were surveyed. Multiple surveyors used UV flashlights to survey various microhabitats. Specimens were collected with large forceps by gently clasping their telson and identified in the field. Only difficult to identify species were removed from microscopic analysis. The microhabitat of each scorpion collected was identified over a total of six sample events per site. A knowledge, attitudes and practices survey was conducted in areas of North and South Trinidad. Niche partitioning is the mechanism that allows different species to coexist in the same habitat with limited resources by allowing differential use of these resources. Scorpions occupy various microhabitats within these forest types. In this study, we surveyed microhabitats ranging from the ground level to the subcanopy level. These microhabitats include bare soil, leaf litter, on and below debris, on shrubs, on loose barky trees, and on exposed branches. 116 persons were interviewed for the KP survey. We found 43% of persons interviewed thought scorpions were insects and not arachnids. 37% had encounters with scorpions, and 48% of these individuals felt they should kill a scorpion when encountered, whereas 28% felt like they should do nothing at all. 100% of all persons interviewed felt that all scorpions were venomous. 48% of all interviewees knew someone that had been stung, with 31% of these victims becoming ill, 11% had no reaction, and 3% died. A number of different home remedies were listed as treatments for scorpion stings, such as drinking sugar water, roasting and eating the scorpion, cutting the sting site and squeezing venom out, drinking milk, tying the sting site, snake bottle, drinking mud water, spitting on a sting site, eating charcoal, and eating herbs. These, however, cannot be validated as effective treatments since different scorpions have different venom potencies and scorpions have been known to give dry stinks. How many times were you stung? I was stung twice from the same scorpion. When I got stung, I felt a sharp pain travel up my left arm because I got stung on my left index finger. Uh, it traveled up straight up to my shoulder. The medical people in the hospital treated me as a priority case and it took me directly into a treatment. If it's a serious sting, or it appears to be having um, symptoms of shortness of breath, etc., then you want to get medical attention right away. But, as a general rule, a good, um, a good um, remedy, a good immediate home remedy for just about any sting, whether it's of a scorpion, a spider, an ant, or a bee, is to put something hydro hygroscopic on it. Uh, many people figure uh, put honey on it. Salt will do as well. Uh, salt or sugar, anything that draws up water, and that will draw it out. Like killing the scorpion, cutting off its sting and stuff, any of those is probably valuable because it makes you feel like you're doing something. You know, it's, it's, very, it's very demoralizing. You have an accident, something goes wrong. And, you know, it's very demoralizing to say, oh, I can't do anything about it. So, um, you know, if... Um, uh, if, if you're doing something about it, you feel better and, and it There are many misconceptions about scorpions regarding the number of species and venom potency of each. We know that scorpions can coexist in different microhabitats. Not all scorpions are venomous and there are eight species found in Trinidad. Despite the public conception about home remedies, the best approach is always to seek medical attention if stung. So, what does all of this mean? Are scorpions really stalkers of the night, or just misunderstood creatures? In reality, they are both.